Welcome to Third Coast Sports TV. I'm your host, Wink. Talk sports, love sports, and drill sports. Sorry I'm a little late. I had a um, problem with this damn uh, Streamlabs app on my phone. I had to restart it all over on my phone and then replug everything in along with all of my um, icons for the title. But uh, we will be discussing uh, Jalil Adai and um, him being not getting a contract from the Houston Texans. And rightfully so, um, he obviously didn't do enough, but we will be discussing that in the next few moments. I'm going to allow a few of you guys to go ahead and get in here while we discuss today's sports topic. Make sure you guys get in the uh, comment section down below so we can get your shout outs. And as soon as you come in, make sure you hit that like button as well. After this, I think I may pump out one more video. I'm not, I haven't totally decided, but I think I'm just going to talk about some of the prospects that I have looked at, um, these specific prospects, what I've seen, what I like from them, and how they can be able to add for my team, regardless if, you know, um, the Texans refuse to kick the, um, kick the um, tires on them or what. So uh, let's see who we got in here. We got uh, Sam Blum. Uh, Jesus, Jabari Mayo, Ed Powers, Fifth Ward, Seven One Three. What's good? Uh, Squirt, Danny MTZ. Yeah, finally caught one live. Yeah, I've been I've been kicking them out back back to back, bro. I just knocked out two more streams. Make sure you go check the other ones out if you weren't able to uh to check them out. Yeah, I ain't playing, bro. I told you I was finna be back. I'm finna come back. Screwston, what's good? Uh, Kadeem Evans, Mod Squad, Nineteen Fourteen, All the Dialogue. What's good, homie? Uh, Jamal Riverson, I am I M G, Three Three Three. What's good? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, um, since you guys will keep asking about all these prospects uh, and guys coming up in free agency, what I'm going to do, I will knock out one more live stream, and that one's going to be a little bit more dedicated to what you guys want to talk about. So I'll come back with a video, and I'll talk about all three of these guys that we just let go today, and uh, we'll discuss what's the plan for Bill O'Brien since... Um, he is making a bunch of moves and he's not resigning a bunch of these dudes. And now I ain't doing too much, bro. I'm doing just enough. You want the content? You got it. So chill up, little nigga, before I go in here and knock your lights out. Uh, Leo King, uh, JW Properties, Professor Trill, who's going to end up down his saying, he's going to, to Professor Lame in a second if he don't keep running his mouth. We might have to send my boy Debo out there, nigga, to shut him up. <laughs> No rodeo this year? That's crazy. For real, they ain't had a rodeo this year? Bro, that's so unlike Houston, bro. That don't make no sense. You know, the, the rodeo, the real money maker, nigga. If you in the food truck industry, bro, because that's what we're going to be doing. That's going to be one of our little hustles. We're going to be doing the uh, the uh, the food truck. And yeah, bro, we ain't going to stick the dog on them. We ain't going to stick the dog on them just yet, Debo. Just hold off for a little second because Trey will be running his mouth. Uh, they had the rodeo, just not too many people went there. Oh, the viral. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. What you think about Jay Taylor in the second? Jonathan Taylor, I, I actually uh, had a video I was getting ready to look about him because I done looked about like five or six prospects who I done looked at. They were mostly receivers, uh, running backs, and a, uh, and a corner that uh, Trio was talking about. So I'm going to talk about those specific guys since those are the um, – you know, highlights and stuff like that in the tape that I did watch. I'll discuss those guys. But let's go ahead and get into this video. Jalil Adai. Um, you know, he we picked him up during the offseason. I didn't really like the move when it happened, even though um, once we let go of Honey Badger, it was a move that needed to happen. But now I'm really trying to reach because I think it's more of a concern now because I don't trust Tayshawn Gibson to step up. And, I, you know, Jalil Adai is more of a box safety. He's a guy who can come down and play in diamond nickel situations and play that linebacker spot. But he honestly didn't He honestly didn't do enough. I believe he all he had was like 35 tackles. He had two picks and like three pass deflections on the year. And uh, he was probably better on special teams than he really was in any other aspect of the football game for us this season. Um, he didn't have a lot of speed. He's a shorter guy. Um, he would whiff on some tackles. He just didn't know where to be. And he's a guy who would be lost at times. He's not even a guy you really thought of when you thought could make a huge impact on his football team. And at times when his secondary looked like it was clicking, sometimes he would be in the mix. Most of the time he wasn't. And, uh, you know, he's just one of those guys where it, it, it I, I don't know why they're just now getting to this. Yeah, he was bad in coverage, but he was, he, it's like, 
why are they just now letting this guy test free agency? He was one of those guys that we should have known about this well over a month ago. We're hearing stuff about DJ Reader and other guys, and now we have we finally have word on Carlos Hyde, and obviously JJ was being let go after a nine year career. Shout out to him, but. He's not Jalen Rager. I already looked at him and he's one of the dudes I got to talk about. See, y'all talking about too many dudes. I told y'all I'm going to dedicate a video talking about that as soon as this video is over. We let's talk about Jaleel and I first, then we can get into the extra shit, Scrooston. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves. You're starting to be like Trill right now. Nigga, you talk when ain't nobody saying nothing to you. <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you, bro. But uh, it's just one of them things right now. Well, um, Jalil and I, I don't really see it. He's depth for any team at this point. He's more of a special team. He's more of a special teams uh, person at this point. I mean, you're not really going to trust him in any coverage. You, you, you're bold if you're trusting him in coverage. And you're definitely bold if you want him to be a starter for your football team. You either don't have a good scouting department, you don't know what you're doing in free agency, or all of the above, because clearly um, Bill O'Brien kicked the tires on him, which he shouldn't have, and uh, he should have kept Honey Badger or, or at least kept Kareem and elevated him to that safety role, then we would be probably in a better situation. But, you know, that is here nor there. Uh, Reed or Clowney? Honestly, Clowney. And the reason why I say Clowney is because he's able. To, he was able to do way more in our scheme. We saw this dude play the middle linebacker position when he would rush over guards and centers. We saw him abuse left tackles. Um, we, we very rarely saw him really go on the right side where J.J. White uh, tends to play from. You didn't really see him play from that side. Uh, we've seen him play 3-4 defensive end, outside linebacker. We've seen him on the line. We've seen him in nickel packages. Um, you know, after, I want to say 2015, he did anytime he was in coverage, he didn't allow a, a, a catch. You know, his awareness and everything, I believe, was increasing. And I think because he was on this team for so long, I think he only would have pushed himself. But DJ Rita would be just as big of a it's just as big of a loss in a sense if Romeo Cornell continues to be your uh, defensive coordinator. I think with the move of uh, having Anthony Weaver be the defensive coordinator and the fact that he's worked with the D-line really as a whole, I think that... Um, his scheme may not be catered to a sense that he may want to get faster and have more guys who have more technique because that's what Anthony Weaver is. Well, like Anthony Weaver's a guy that likes to that one thing I know about him, he's very prone on technique. So maybe he maybe wants to get more guys with technique who can get there. And I think that I don't think that's the wrong answer. Yeah, it really can't. But I think the reason why you can't say reader is because Romeo Cornell isn't the uh, DC anymore. That's the main reason why if Romeo was still the DC, then I would say hands down, it's, it's DJ Reader because DJ Reader is the reason why everybody around him was eating, including the middle linebackers, the Will, the Sam, the Jack, and, uh, you know, not even to mention the guys on the line. So when you have that, when you have that situation and you're giving your secondary time because your quarterback is being pushed back from a, a broken down pocket, you know, we all know the major reason why that's happening, and that's because DJ Reader was in the mix. But uh, as far as Jaleel Dye concerned, um, you know, his tackling angles, I didn't like him. Um, coverage, as we said, zone, man, you can forget about it. Um, you know, he didn't have the ideal height for a safety to be able to jump in situations where it would have been jump ball situations because if Justin Reed could get gloved on like that by Tyreek Hill, who's 5'10 in week six, I could only imagine what would happen with Jaleel, would Jaleel die in that situation. So it's just one of them things where we want to get on the, on, on the sides where we have some guys with some height that have length, but also have speed, agility, and awareness. And, and not only that, you got to be able to chase these dudes down, man. You got to be able to just read and react. And I don't think he was a guy suited to do what we wanted on this football team. But, uh, you know, it's no knock against him. He didn't really fit within our scheme. Romeo Cornell didn't know what he was doing with the secondary throughout the entire season. They didn't do anything to add to it. And Bill O'Brien took away every component that mattered and put really, he really, honestly, Bill O'Brien really fed Romeo Cornell to the wolves. I mean, I think Romeo would have been able to do a little bit more had he had a few more guys in the talent pool in the secondary and 
a few other guys that would have been able to rush the passer, but I don't think he knew exactly what he had in Jacob Martin. Hence is why you saw him start very late in the season and you didn't really see him start making plays until that Patriot game, which was what, like week 12? You know what I'm saying? So week 12, week 13, you know, so then you start seeing Jacob Martin coming along. Then you see guys like Barkevious Mingo get a uh, a block punt, which is all he did for the season. And shout out to everybody who's in the chat. Uh, 713 Houston Sportscast. Y'all make sure y'all go check him out, bro. Shout out to my last night when he came through on the sauce. Dude been putting out content. You know, he not like some of these other fakers and pretenders that we tried to, you know, help you know, in the past, y'all know what I mean. And uh, I don't think he's that kind of guy. He's he's building his own brand. He got his own thing. And uh, he makes sense when he talks. So y'all make sure y'all go check him out. Um, uh, Danny, uh, Jaleel had awesome multiple tackles in the wrong direction. He would push people forward at the time. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he just wouldn't. He, he just wasn't what we needed. I mean, when we when we picked him up, I was just like, this isn't really the move that needed to be made. But, you know, leave it to Bill O'Brien. Uh, to assist the talent pool, make moves, sh throw away draft picks, or, you know, just sign dudes to contracts for one-year deals because we still don't even know what we have in Roby because if Roby is let go and he's able to test the market, which that move should be end up um, being notarized by. If he, if he doesn't have a contract by Friday, Saturday at the very latest, then I don't see... Um, I don't see him getting resigned by the Houston Texans. And I really think they're leaning in the direction of letting him go. And the main reason why is because he didn't get his head around. He got penalties. Um, when it came to bigger guys like um when it came to bigger guys like Keenan Allen and Michael Thomas, we're gonna end up having to play guys like through throughout the season. I believe some and then the AJ Brown. The fact that AJ Brown on the Tennessee Titans abused you the way that he did in two back-to-back -back games. You can't justify having a guy like Bradley Roby on this football team. People are trying to say he's the best corner we had on this football team. I beg to differ. With only two picks, yeah, he had some pass deflections. Yeah, he was a hit for hit, but at the end of the day, catches were still being allowed. He was still giving up third down after third down. Um, dudes were scoring on him in the red zone. So what did he really do? He wasn't shut down at the very least in any capacity. The best games he had were, you know, kind of mid to late in the season. He got hurt. He came back. He had a phenomenal game against the Patriots, but he could not sustain that level of success when um, when he came back. And he should have been able to sustain that because of the team that he had just come from in the uh, Denver Broncos. And he's had Chris Harris to learn from. And when I feel like when you come to the Houston Texans and then you go from a veteran like that to play with Jonathan Joseph, I feel personally your your talent should increase exponentially. That's how I feel. I feel like he should have just been locking dudes up because that's how they that's how he wanted to be paid. I don't feel that that was happening. So um, he's another guy that we got to keep our eyes on. And if something happens with that information, then I will um, put out another video and I will be letting you guys know about that. But I'm going to end up bringing this video to a close because um, I got another video we're going to pump out. So all the other miscellaneous information from draft prospects to guys y'all want to sign. Because I see y'all talking about a bunch of things in the... Um, and, um, you know, as far as corners that we should sign, I see y'all talking about D-tackles. I see y'all talking about pass rushers on top of uh, draft prospects. And I'll go ahead and we'll drop a video right now as soon as this one over. I just got to uh, take like 10 minutes uh, to get all my tags and everything right. Get every, um, label my video and uh, set everything up for the next video so that we can go ahead and have a good live stream. Because, you know, this is just a good day for me as far as uh, content is being put out. So y'all make sure y'all be on the lookout for that. Give me like, uh, I want to say it's now give me till 3.30, 3.30, 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. And you guys will have another live stream. But I got kids calling me in the background. They about to start working my nerves. So let me go ahead and see what they got going on. Um, what do y'all think Jaleel Adai ends up going forward? And what do you think his impact was while he was on the Houston Texans? But well, welcome to Third Coast Sports TV. I'm your host, Wink. Talk sports, love sports, enjoy sports. Y'all enjoy y'all day and be on the lookout for my next live stream.